I love it when Pachinik wants to come on because I'm usually trying to get him on. Former head of psychological warfare of the State Department, held high positions in the State Department, worked for other agencies, helped found with General Boykin, Delta Force, best selling author, Tom Clancy's co writer, and one of his main source, composite character, Jack Ryan, overthrew countries, blah, blah, blah. He, we don't need to go into all that. People know he's a smart guy. They've seen how much he talked about come true. I'll tell you, he wasn't really a real popular guest 15 years ago. He's like CFR and stuff. He's out of that now, but you know, people didn't get it. Now they really love him, the listeners do, because they get he really knows what he's talking about. So we don't have a lot of time. I got callers I promise we'll go to, but just to gestalt a snapshot, I don't know your view yet, stevepachenik.com. What, I will put your Twitter up as well. What was your view on last night? I think he was himself. He was devastating. It was perfectly done. Uh, I'm afraid they're going to kill him. I mean, this is beautiful. Well, let me just say thanks for allowing me to come on again. I'm fighting with you and the people, but I thought it was brilliant. This was exactly what I was waiting for. I have to thank Steve Brannon and Josh Kushner for doing the most brilliant psychological operation I've seen in a long time, putting the four women there before the debate, putting them while he during the debate, and Trump was on the offense. He was polite, he was direct, and he clearly stated what the issues were. He was like a surgeon, because I know you're a, you know, a doctor. That's correct. I mean, it was a surgical strike, irrespective of all the nonsense about uh, the comments afterwards, which were nonsensical. What Trump was providing was the, our voice for our revolution, which is far greater than the Republican Party. And as I've said repeatedly, over a year and a half, the Republican Party is thin it's not relevant. We who have fought from the day one since 9-11 and created the Tea Party, helped you with the Alex Jones Show, have now a spokesperson for that revolution. That revolution will continue. He indicted Hillary. He said, you're going to prison. He was right. She is going to prison. Ironically, Comey of the FBI, the only success he's ever had besides destroying the FBI, destroying the Department of Justice, was to indict and convict Martha Stewart for obstruction of justice. Well, she did nothing. And lying. Can you believe that? But he couldn't do that for Hillary Clinton. Trump brought out the fact that, uh, that the, the, the uh, what's her name, uh, John Brennan, the DNI, Loretta Lynch, of the attorney general, the entire system. He brought up Hillary corrupt. supporting rapist. Uh, he brought up how they're working with ISIS. He, he just, he, well, he was... He, he, he enumerated the whole thing, and the liberal press cannot handle it. But I want to go back a little bit before uh, Bill Clinton. It's it, There is a history in the Democratic Party of fornication in the White House. Let's start with LBJ, who continuously seduced a group of women. Or Kennedy. Well, well, wait, before that, is that, more importantly, because LBJ seduced Doris Kearns Goodwin, this beloved historian of the left wing who continuously writes about Lincoln. Then you have JFK, who was an Addison's disease, had amphetamines, vitamins, and shots on a daily basis, was not a good lover, repeatedly had women in the White House. And let me qu quote Colin Powell, General Colin Powell, who said that his Hillary is a disaster with hubris. No matter what she touches, it always gets screwed up. And he then added, excuse my language, and her husband's continuously dicking women in their household. That's Colin Powell. Well, also, I mean, it's confirmed by everybody. Secret Service, FBI, Blackwater folks, special forces that have guarded her. They said she blows up constantly. We're talking carpet chewing, you know, screaming, yelling over nothing. She's... As a psychiatrist, what is this, these blow-ups? She is sick. As a psychiatrist, I have said repeatedly, and as a neurologist, she has Parkinsonism. She cannot run for the presidency of the United States. I, again, compel her doctor, who was a disaster in her diagnosis, and Columbia physician surgeons to release the information to show that she has Parkinsonism. You could see yesterday, she continuously smiled, looked up. She had to sit down. Like, she had to I forgot that. She had to sit down, basically. She had to sit down, but remember the same man who ends up as the CIA guy to fix her panel it was there at the end all the time. She has to read her answers. She could not handle an active, vigorous campaign. She has not flown. She cannot fly. She cannot really exert, exert any energy throughout an eight-hour day. Exactly. She's going to be off for 20 days, they announced last week. We're like, 50, yeah. we're like five in. 
You I'm, know, you uh, this is a crime, and this is where the FBI individuals have to break out, the CIA has to break out, the military officers have to break out. The exactly. Officers. Now is the time to start disregarding this criminal group that's hijacked the country. If Correct. you're an American, this is this is not mutiny. We have to stop going with these people. No, this is not mutiny at all. This is a real revolution in a way that we haven't seen since 1776 because corruption has permeated the Republican Party through this effete, insignificant man, Paul Ryan, and the other man, Frankenkopf. It was so. Isn't that an endorsement of Trump that he has these horrible neocons and these nobodies and these sycophants of the establishment against him? That's a good thing. I think it's brilliant because what he has done is to recapitulate the fact that all these neocons, the Wolfowitzes, the Pearls, the Steve Hadleys, the John Boltons, none of whom served in our military, all of whom avoided our service in Vietnam, nevertheless, under the auspices of the Israeli Mossad, have come to the United States with dual citizenship, including Chertoff, Giuliani's right-hand prosecutor, and created a 9-11 stand out. This is still the effect of what happened when America realized, thanks to you and others, that we had our own government kill our own people. This is the aftermath. But the Republican Party is so stupid so inept that they can't put a handle around it. They they didn't realize it. I agree. I. Okay, so we've done Porch Motorm on this. How do you expect him with 27 and a half days to strike back a false flag? They try to kill him, a, a fake false flag on Hillary, uh, more fake, you know, lawsuits with well, Jane does. They can try whatever false flag. It's, it's now irrelevant. Hillary's not even relevant anymore. She is sick, incapable of... But she is flag. relevant that they would try to put that walking corpse in. Shows how arrogant the establishment is. Well, they can put whatever corpse they want, but Trump will blow it out. Now I understand that he really does understand psychological warfare, and he is effectively using it and will continue... Well, let me give you the news then. You may not know this. You probably do with your sources. I've confirmed he got convinced by family. The Clintons lied to them and said, let's play nice. Let's not go there. That's why he did that at, at the last debate. Now he understands, and he's told some of his family that mean well... It shows he's a good guy. He listens to his family, but it's also kind of a bad thing. He just said, look, sit down. Watch what I do. So now we're seeing Trump be Trump, and he needs to just stay that way. That's exactly right. And I think Kutchner and I think Bannon have done a brilliant job, and Miss Conway as well, of steering him right to the right direction. And now the American public has to understand this is not about a person. This is not about a, a personality as much as it is about a dynamic that... Exactly. He's a figurehead. It's the old establishment. We know they're bad. It doesn't matter what they throw at Trump now. He's our figurehead. That's correct. He is the articulation of what you and I and many of others have said. We are tired. We're sick of it. We no longer want to follow what this country has been doing and what the leaders. You have Obama, CIA, a bred infant. Clinton, another CIA bred infant. Uh, Bush Jr., a disaster, another CIA. This is the end of the CIA, and it's capability to insert into our presidency the people that they've nurtured and created. In turn, we have Michael Flynn of the Defense Intelligence Agency, and she has, on the other hand, somebody not as capable, Michael Hayden. But now we have a confrontation between the civilian intelligence and the military intelligence, which is what I've said for a long time. It's time that our military intelligence took over did not follow the precepts of an incompetent Catholics in action or CIA and just put our country into a, a, a steady stream of effectiveness. I still go back to General Eisenhower. It was Eisenhower who, as a general said, beware of the military industrial complex. It was Eisenhower who went to Korea and stopped the war that Truman, a Democrat, created. It was Eisenhower who warned of a potential war. And who tried to fix race Vietnam. relations, which the Democrats then seized on and weaponized. Correct. Now, the fact that Hillary's using Putin as a, as a false uh, emblem of uh, nastiness and, and, and bitterness is the fact that she is inept. She has always been inept as Secretary of State. I agree, but let's go back to Eisenhower, because it seems like everything good came out of him... And we saw shadows of it, like he stabilized Iraq, Egypt, 
put in groups that were secular, and then the CIA changes its policy and overthrows those to put jihadis in to destabilize it all, I guess, to have some place to bomb. Is that correct? That is absolutely correct. Uh, Eisenhower warned America of the CIA's uh, detrimental force to our country. He, he warned Alan Dulles, and he, he reprimanded him and the other individuals because he had General Biddle Smith, and he had created his own psychological operations within the White House, which he kept away from the CIA. He didn't like the work. He didn't like who they were. He himself was exactly what America was, Midwestern, modest, not grandiose, in no way was he interested in money. He was 59 years old when he was a colonel under Douglas MacArthur, one of the biggest pains in the ass that we've ever had as a general, and he effectively led a war in Europe. He then returned to become president of Columbia University, not the head of a, a company, not the head of some corporation, didn't take money at $600,000 a shot the way Hillary did or Bill, and went on to become president of the United States. He had Nixon. Nixon had shortfalls, but having worked with him, I've got to tell you, he was a brilliant man. And considering they call him Tricky Dick, in comparison to Hillary, he was only missing 18 minutes versus Hillary's 32,000 emails. That's right. All right. We, I want to come back and take a few calls in two final segments. You can write shotgun with us. I appreciate you being here, Dr. Bacchanning. No and David Knight's taking over. I, got, I want to go to these calls, but just we're about to go to break. Let me just ask you this quick. They're going to strike back, though, and they run these hoaxes that he's got to step down. How do we get the public not to buy into that? Because they avoid it and just continuously support them and listen to you and work on what, what we need to do for ourselves. But you're really confident we're going to be able to beat him. I mean, I know he's going to win, oh, but they're going to try I to steal we can beat him. The next 30 days is very important because, remember, 30 days in 21st century is an accelerated period of time. I want the people to go out, to vote, to watch the elect uh, electoral booths, and to keep on uh, supporting him. She is finished. She's physically and mentally not capable of traveling, not capable of answering. No, I understand. I understand. But the elite are so arrogant. They're going to try to just steal it and put her in there. What happens if they try to steal it when we come back? I mean, Trump's going to fight it, obviously. But, uh, you know, CNN has openly fake polls where they have almost double sampling for Democrats. I mean, this is unprecedented. All right, Don and Mike, I'm going to you. Dr. Steve Pachanik of stevepachanik.com is our guest. And let's put his Twitter up on screen so I can plug that, too. I'm out on shows of InfoWars.com. This is a huge time to be alive. This is real. I've not been excited about other elections because it's just two, two wings on the same bird. This is different. Seismic. It's global. It's important. We need new management. This isn't even about, you know, parties or anything. This is about a corrupt elite, disconnected, smoking their own dope. But briefly, in 30 seconds, Dr. Pachinik, I understand you're putting a good face on it. I agree. We're in very positive waters. The general public needs confidence. They get roped into these stampedes like lemmings. But for our listeners, who you know, you know, aren't your average duck, they understand what's going on. I, I mean, I really want to know, from your perspective, how you think they're going to strike back. I mean, I get the fact trying to run this sick, crazy woman just shows they shouldn't be in office. But at the same time, they're still going to try this. They're still going to run this thing. They're still going to try to steal it. So what do we do? Well, what we do is, number one, I would love to see the honorable men and women of the FBI who've been compromised by a corrupt boss, James Comey, to come out on their own and basically state that Leak. they no longer believe in their leader. and that. Ooh, imagine a press conference. Him. If a hundred of them stood together, you couldn't fire them all. It'd be over. Well, that's my point. And it's time for the American citizen who works for the CIA for the Exactly. FBI. Why do you and I have to be the ones hanging our ass out here? And I'm not bragging that we're heroes, but where, where, where is that survival well, instinct? You and I, it, it's very simple. You and I don't have a pension. We're not guaranteed our livelihood. You and I know that we have to hustle every day for our living. We don't have a guaranteed life cycle. But the FBI individual thinks that he or she is going to be given, uh, going to be taken care of for their whole life, get a pension. It's just not going to happen. But you said it. They are discrediting it with a mortal wound. They can't put this back together again unless they turn against it. Well, they have to. There, there's no other alternative. And I know many of the FBI uh, career officers, and they have to remember, James Comey was never an FBI agent. He was never a special agent. He's he a politico. A prosecutor. And he was a lawyer, and he was a compromised lawyer, with along with Sandy Berger and Cheryl Mills and uh, all the but others. But you're right. The next 28 days, we need people now to do the right thing, folks. That's do correct. It. The first
first thing I would say, I'd like the FBI people to walk out and say, look, we no longer can support Comey. There are those in the CIA who can say the same thing about John Brennan. There are those in the military who can say, look, we're standing up for what we believe in. But they can defy orders. If the orders and the people are incompetent or corrupt, there is an obligation in the Constitution for us to fight the men. As to the Declaration of Independence, you're right. Don in Texas, you're on the air with Dr. Steve Pachenik. Go ahead. Hey, Alex, it's finally, it's good to finally be able to talk to you. Hey, you, you termed uh, Hillary the walking corpse. In fact, when I saw that fly crawling all over her face, the first thing that came to mind was rotting demon flesh. Uh, I mean, I've been saying she's like a reanimated corpse for a while. I don't know what drugs they got her on. And that's a good question for Pachinik. How could she be not able to even be in public for a while and do okay at these debates? She has to rest for weeks and weeks as a physician. What well, are they doing? There's another issue that you brought out a long time ago, and I think that she may be receiving blood transfusions, which has been known in the past to revive certain people for a certain amount of time. But if you looked at her at the end of the debate, she was very tired. She was yeah, she was exhausted. having to sit down. There was a few minutes when we've got clips coming up where she kind of blacks out. Correct. And then that CIA operative, who's their lawyer, so to speak, but he worked in Africa and elsewhere, comes in and picks a, takes out her notes. It's the same guy you see all the time. Absolutely. Great point, Dr. Pachenik. Don, go ahead. Anything else? Yeah, it's like she's a pile of dead flesh. In that post-debate interview, she looked like she had about had it. Her eyes were bugged out and going in different directions. And, I mean, she, I think she reached the limit of her drugs, yeah. It just shows the hubris. Why didn't they get a better candidate? Because it's her turn. It's her turn, Dr. Pachenik, isn't it? So we have to run a corpse. Well, the point is that she's so ruthless and the machinery is so corrupt that they've compromised everybody in the government, including Comey, Loretta Lynch. Yeah, they're their Obama. own worst enemy. They don't get it. I mean, at, at the end of the day, they're the ones bringing them down. We just want to stop nuclear war. Thank you, Don. Mike and others, your call. 70 seconds away with Dr. Pachenik. Then we've got David Dyke coming in. Get ready. Let's go ahead and take a few more phone calls with Dr. Pachenik. Then I'm going to play a special clip we've slowed down of, 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 of Clinton looking like a crazy person. And again, he is a crazy old creepy man, but this image, we're going to put it out everywhere. It's going to be very powerful against the enemy. So get ready. Infowars.com is the coordinates. It'll be up in the next few hours. You'll see it first here if you're a TV viewer in a few minutes. Uh, right now, uh, Dr. Pachenik's our guest taking a few calls. Let's talk to Mike in Illinois. You're on the air. Go ahead. Yeah, hi, Alex. I appreciate all you're doing for the Republic. Uh, have you ever read uh, George Washington's vision? Yes, I have. The United States? Please don't thank me, though. I'm bailing water. We're in the same boat, brother. I just keep explaining. The reason I say don't thank me is this is survival. So thank you for yeah. being being awake. I'll say that. But that's why I say don't thank me. We're in a survival war here. I know. I, I don't want to be in North Korea run by crazy Hillary with a big rubber head. Yeah. You know, the, you know, the last vision, though, it's, you know, the whole world comes against the United States, which means we don't go along with the globalists, you know. That, uh, so I think that means Trump's going to get in there because we're not going along with No, I agree. Plan. The world's destiny, as the prophet said, stands and will fall or stand with the United States. I think it was Pachenik said the quote. I looked it up. It was from uh, Bismarck that uh, what, what, what God loves, uh, you know, drunks, children in the United States of America. Dr. Pachenik? That's correct. We, we will survive. I mean, we are so unique in the, in the world that we have an ability to change very quickly and ability to change our leadership and still continue as an effective a republic. No other country can do that. Why are they so obsessed? I mean, I know you helped bring down the Soviet Union. They, they've got their own problems, but Russia seems much, a lo much less problem than China. Uh, why is there an obsession with Russia? Is that because the neocons, the roots of that got kicked out of Russia? Yes, I mean, the the neocons who really had have never accomplished anything except destroy our own country. They've never created a treaty uh, like Jim, Jimmy Carter at the Camp David Accord and Bush Sr. We had a Cambodia Peace Conference. They have accomplished nothing. So Victoria Hewlin and her husband and a bunch of the Jewish neocons and others have thought that they could have put Israel in the middle of the map and make it a dominant power. That's not going to happen. Israel has been, will continue to be a strategic liability for the United States. We will support it to the extent we can, but our major concerns are in East Asia and Southeast Asia, and now India and Pakistan are fighting. So we have much... Oh, yeah, Kashmir, that's flaring up. Is that a big concern? 
that is a major, major concern because that's two nuclear countries that are really... Uh, let me ask you this. We do five more minutes in the next hour to finish your calls, but let me start asking the question now. Why is it historically that geopolitically everything heats up at once, lines up? Because it's, it's like, I know it's all connected, but it almost just seems like it's a cycle and we just do it. Because all over the world, all hell's breaking loose. Well, why? Well, I think you hit it on the head. We are interconnected, but we're not interconnected as people thought. We're interconnected because the vacuum of powers uh, cuts right across the world. When we are no longer have an effective leadership like Obama. And Let's face no it, the United States has been dominant and the brain, and when our brain dies, the world dies. Well, it, it, we haven't been effective. I mean, under Condoleezza Rice, we had a, a disastrous foreign policy. Under Hillary Clinton, we had a disastrous foreign policy. Under Obama, we have done nothing but apologize for things that I don't even understand. You don't go to Laos and say we're sorry. What you do is you continue to develop your own capabilities, but we don't have a leader who... Exactly. They see us as weak, all this ass-kissing. Let, I mean, that's 101. Let's come back and talk about that with Dr. Pacheco. Straight ahead, finish a few more calls and hand the baton to David Knight. I'm Alex Jones, Infowars.com. That's what binds us together no matter where we're from or what color we are. We love the true diversity of competition. We love free association. We love private property and family and freedom of religion. To not practice it or to practice it, we just believe in freedom. And a bunch of weirdos telling us how to talk and how to live. It's a bunch of spoiled, rotten, crazy academia and media people and social engineers who just are so delusional and never lived in the real world, they think this dog's hunting. All they've done is created a bunch of mental midgets that are their minions, but those are the people that were susceptible to it. They've just created a giant group of people that absolutely hate their guts and are building alternate economies right now. And they hate every other system they can't control, Russia, you name it. It's a very, very dangerous situation. We'll take a few final calls for Dr. Pachenik here and then play the special clip after he leaves and go to David Knight. But... Going back to Dr. Pachinik, I was asking the question before the break about, well, I mean, I mean, well, you heard the question. Where do you think this is all going? Well, I think this is going towards a very positive uh, outcome. Number one, it's going to get rid of the Republican Party as it is and should not be. Number two, it's going to focus in on the corruption at the White House on the Clinton Foundation, on the people who are involved with the Clinton, on the Democratic Party. And it's breaking up the entire system in a way that we don't have to go into violence. We don't have to go into chaos. And I find it a very constructive revolution, which is Trump revolution. And I think it's being led by very responsible people. Which I should add, I've got to admire the people that created the Internet in the 60s and 70s, knowing they were giving it to the government as a spy system that would actually be a two-way time bomb knowing, as I've now researched it deeply, that they knew that the elites would take it for one reason, and it was actually something completely different, uh, and the foresight that, yes, we were going to this decadent cycle, but despite that, putting it into information war uh, would have us be the most advanced country in the world to defeat other corrupt nations, but also defeat our own elite. You talk about some geniuses back then. Well, let me, let me be very specific. In 1973 at MIT, when I was getting my Ph.D. in political science, one of the things that I was trained by the DARPA, Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, and other intelligence groups in 1973 was the Internet and social media. And by the way, my dad was in that, too. It was, it's pretty That's amazing. Correct. The Internet and social media. So forget Zuckerberg, forget Gates and all that nonsense in Silicon Valley. This was already developed by DARPA. This was already developed by intelligence agencies. And they were using it at that time and understood that it would be a major force in terms of taking down regimes and changing our own regime. They understood that because I was already trained by Ithiel de Solopol, Lucian Pai, and others with respect to regime change. And that was one of the things that we used later on. So the geniuses in America are really incredible. And there are those who speak against us, like Case, and there are those who speak with us, like Paul Thiel. And well, let me ask you this like question. How could guys in the 50s, 60s, and 70s envision this whole future world, build it, release it, and it's done so well? I mean... Are, are there still people coming up like that? Because it's amazing. In in some ways, yes. In some way, no. But the basic premise, if you have to remember one thing, is the fact that we had a lot of science fiction writers, Roddenberry, Asimov, all of whom predicted that this would occur 
in my own books on the Clancy franchise, I started to write 20 years ago about cyber nation, cyber control, cyber terrorism, and nobody understood that. Sure, you've been a total visionary and expanding. Talking about Asimov, he predicted in the 40s, not just the whole robot Correct. system. He, he, he predicted the future, computers predicting the future, which is now here. Correct. And, and that's the genius that we do have in the United States if you leave us alone and let us do what we do best and don't co-opt us with, with money or with politics. And basically, we can do very well, and we will continue to do well. We do have that capability. As we Why is America so special? Because it truly is diverse. Well, it's not, it's not only diverse, but we have really more freedom than anybody realizes. We, we don't coddle our people, and we allow everybody to come to their fullest potential, despite what is said. And, and that's why that's it's a purposeful, politically correct attack to go after our real diversity and not coddling and claim that coddling is freedom to create a stagnant system. It's a huge crime. Well, it's, it is. I mean, it, I call it the fascism of the left. I mean, when Hillary Clinton says to gather together and she repeats lies and attacks Alex Jones and me and attacks us for Sandy Hook, which we knew was a false flag, and even the fact that 9-11 was an inside job, she's just repeating what Hermann Goering and, and Goebbels said in, in, in Germany, a Nazi. She's nothing more than a, than a spokesperson for the fascist left. And there is an equal amount of fascism on the left sure, both. was on the well, I want to take a few calls and let you go. I know you're busy, and I need to go to David Knight. But let me just say this. Clearly, they're going to try to steal the election. I said they'd do it. Now they're federalizing it. Everybody should still vote to be on record to make it a landslide. I think, though, I won't go into all the hundreds of reasons, but just a approximation. If they try to steal it, it's the biggest mistake they ever made. And then that way leads madness. I mean, if they're, and I know there's good people. And I never used to be a person, oh, the government's good, blah, blah, blah. I've just learned statistically people in government are more awake than the general public. On average, and not saying I'm saying they're great people, but it's like there's innovators on average who are more awake than anybody. But it seems like governments had a front row seat to the corruption, so we shouldn't make it our enemy. They want to create a civil war. The George Soros's we want to bypass that, but they will try to steal the election. What are your final concerns about that? Because, or, or do you agree or disagree? Because I just know they're so full of hubris, so full of chutzpah, bravada uh, that they're going to try it. I mean, we know they are. Not, what do they have to lose? They're going to do it. Well. They have everything to lose. They will try to uh, denigrate again uh, Trump, and they will try to, try to denigrate you and me and others involved in it. It will not work. What will happen is basically they're in the process of hurting themselves. They're, they're in a spiral of self-destruction. She was in that spiral from the very beginning when she never disavowed the activities of her husband, who was a total jerk, and really was ineffectual. And that spiral of self-destruction will continue. Now she's physically and mentally incapable, so someone has to take over. It won't be Bill Clinton. It'll be Podesta. Which shows this uh, elite is incompetent that they would put a corpse forward. I mean, this is the biggest – I keep going back to that. This is a total indictment on the Democratic Party – and the establishment, and I guess they shouldn't have a crazy old Nazi collaborator at 87 running it. Well, they put up their choice. It's not an issue anymore of Democrats versus Republicans. It's an issue very much of the American public wants a revolution that's effective, constructive, and lets us to continue to be the predominant power in the world without attacking Iraq, Syria, and all. And oh, can you imagine when Trump cuts taxes by half? Oh, my God. Well, you know, self-destructiveness is something that we can change by th throwing them out, and we can't change their behavior. I mean, you see the nonsensical points that she makes. You see how the entire media is co uh, co uh, corrupted and co-opted. Remember, the Zuckers who have to run CNN and the other cable companies have lost their audience. You, you have, as you said before, and I know, a far bigger audience, but we fund these cable companies because of the fees we pay. I was about to say, I, I'm not bragging, it's surreal it to know surreal. that we had two and a half million viewers last night just on streams, and it's That's growing. Right. It's surreal to know we had 24,000 phone calls that tried to call in, and I look at CNN's ratings, so I don't get this paradigm, because I still psychologically, you're a psychiatrist, feel like CNN's bigger than me, even though they're not, and I don't understand it. It's kind of like, you finally see your dad, he's shorter than you, but he still looks bigger than you. I, I don't know how to explain that. Well, what it is is the paradoxical intention. They they think that they can pull all kinds of fast tricks when, in fact, they're, they're hurting themselves. Let me give you an example. The very opening of that whole debate,
debate with Franzenkopf, his nonsensical statements, and then bringing out a Singaporean student to talk about democracy was absurd. Singapore, under Lee Kuan Yew, whom I knew and I worked with, is the most repressive society in Asia. It is effective, but it is a demagoguery. And to put him there as a symbol of democracy was an absurd uh, statement on the University of Washington and the man who ran the so-called presidential commission. They had no idea what they were doing. It shows you how... Isn't Singapore a British totalitarian test? Well, it was, but Singapore left, and Lee Kuan Yew, who was uh, studied at Oxford, got a PhD, initially became a communist, made it into a highly repressive... Uh, no, I know. They, like, call him the dean of the island and everything. And it's Correct. Just... I mean, he is a highly honorable individual, but he is total repression. So to put a Singaporean student there to represent democracy is an oxymoron. I was about to say, but, but that's the problem. As soon as he goes, he's an honorable guy, runs a technocracy... And so, yeah, low crime overall, but it's a total tyranny, but a, 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 a good tyranny in that it was run by a good guy. As soon as he leaves, it degenerates. That's correct, but it shows you the stupidity of the, the presidential commission, the fact that uh, neither one of the examiners, Anderson Cooper, questioned it. It, did, it showed you that Franklin Kopf had no idea of what he was doing, and it showed you the University of Washington had no idea of what they were doing. So once again, ignorance is prevalent in our academia, in our media, and in our candidates. And, and Trump is learning, and he's a fast learner. And the minute he picks that up, he hits them. And that's what people can't tolerate. Also, they envy him because he was able to achieve a wealth at the risk of his own well-being. I mean, you don't get to build billions of dollars of net worth on the basis of somebody giving you millions. You can still throw that away. That's not even relevant. He never gave up. And you can see he keeps on going on flight after flight after flight to town after town, whereas Hillary can't do anything. She's totally incapacitated. And it shows how the media goes along with it, and they wonder why their ratings drop and drop. They don't... It's just like... It's watching lemmings go off the edge of a cliff. Let, let's take a few calls and let Pachinik go, because i got to go to David here. We're skipping this break. Mike in Louisiana, you're on the air worldwide with Dr. Steve Pachinik. Yeah, Alex. Uh, listen, I don't know if you caught this, but uh, last night when Trump was saying that Hillary and Obama won't say anything about radical Islamic terrorists, uh, when she was her, and during her response, she called it radical jihadist terror. And then right after that, she said it has nothing to do with Islam. I know, and, I saw that. Meanwhile, they're saying it's bad that he tweeted she is a criminal, saying she is now sexist to say someone's a woman. This is total assault on language. Dr. Pachinik, what is this attack on language? I mean, obviously, it's to create total it, mental illness. It, it's, a, it's a distraction, but basically, it's the beginning of trying to create thought control. You know, George Orwell uh, warned us of it. It's sure, reducing simple. language then. I'm sorry? So it's 1984. It's reducing language. Yeah, it's reducing language to basically the ability for them to control what we say and how we say it. It's nonsensical. It's not even relevant. It's academic foolishness. Uh, language. I agree. So it shows how delusional they are that this would actually work. Oh, absolutely. But it gives a lot of academicians, uh, you know, salaries, and it gives the president something to say or do other than the fact he's wasting our money and time. Sure, but how do you sit around in a boardroom and go, let's attack language and reduce it down to nothing so we destroy Boy. civilization? I mean, these people are reprobate. Well, they don't know the history of World War II. What it shows is the complete ignorance of Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, Obama, and, and the neocons in terms of what happened during World War II. They claim they understand it. These neocon Jews are as stupid as they come. And unfortunately, they came from my university, Cornell, which produced Steve Hadley, Paul Wolfowitz, Sandy Berger, and Fukuyama. All morons. Academic well, I think morons. the main prime mover, whether you know they be neocons or whatever they are, is they are arrogant. These people like float around in this self delusion and well, like, they have no jobs. They they're not able to do what you or I or the ordinary American is able to do to go out, make a living on their own and create an asset. They've never created an asset. All they can do is become sycophants in Washington, D.C., get a pension from some think tank, the Rand Corporation, the Brookings Institute, which is a joke, run by Strobe Talbot, the man who cleaned up uh, Bill Clinton. He was his cleaner. 
and a, and a CIA operative. I mean, these are not very bright people. That's right. Uh, you, you show that Talbot was the handler of Hillary and Bill, I guess, in England. Exactly. He was the one who said, oh, no, Myrna was not a problem. Bill Clinton was not a problem. He's totally complicit. All collusive agents. And I know well, I read, tell me this is accurate, that when they sent the Clintons into Russia, they were like some of the worst agents ever. Well, Bill Clinton never showed up at Oxford. He was on a Fulbright scholarship. He went in, and he was supposed to monitor uh, anti-war protests or protesters, and he was totally a disaster. But the agency doesn't really care whether you're effective. What they care about is that you have the profile, like Bill Clinton, no father, mother was a prostitute, and you had a father figure. Same thing with uh, Obama, no father or father Kenya, but the real issue is his mother that they never talk about. She's a CIA operative, maternal grandmother CIA, maternal grandfather CIA. He's a product of the CIA, a mulatto mixture who was brought out with no accomplishment, no future, and no capability to do anything. So what they were interested in was control. They didn't really, the CIA has no capability to think strategically or act strategically. They've co-opted. They just further their own a uh, aims. Well, you got John Brennan, you got Doolin, you've got, you know, all kinds of pathetic individuals who really were, were ineffectual in, in intelligence. Eisenhower said it. A whole bunch of our generals have said it. I've said it repeatedly. I oversaw them in terms of, of military intelligence. They were pathetic, yet they co-opted our military to do so come to do so. I know. I can't believe they're taking over the military. Uh, Angie in Alaska, you're on the air with Dr. Steve Pachanek. Go ahead. Um, yes, Dr. Pachanek, I agree with you that the American people, we do want a revolution. We want a revolution against our crony government. We want a revolution against them putting us into wars that we don't want. Um, we want to revolt and have jobs instead of them making us lose our jobs with the EPA and all their bureaucratic BS. Sure. And I, and I really think that um, last night's debate was fantastic. I think that for anybody who's ever been a, um, a victim of sexual violence, I think that Donald Trump probably stood up for more women last night than, than I've ever seen anybody. Well, let me tell you, I've never endorsed a candidate like this and gotten behind him. And before I did, because I don't like the casinos and stuff, I really did some snooping. I made some phone calls. I did some stuff. And if Trump does anything, he spoils the daylights out of women. So he's a rapist like I'm an Easter bunny. Yeah, I thought it was phenomenal that uh, he stood up for those women. And if anybody's even seen the videos, it's deplorable what the Clintons have done to these women. And I, I, I just, our, our senators up here, they're like, this weekend, they were saying, oh, they, they're not going to support Donald Trump. He needs to stand down. And that, yeah, yeah, doesn't that go to the arrogance? He's, Bill Clinton is settling rape cases. Hillary covers up. She, she represents pedophiles. And they're bitching at him about some secret, edited, racy tape put out by a Bush, and Jerry Falwell Jr. has come out and said he thinks the Republicans leaked it. Of course him leaving the show is fake. Of course Bush did this. Of course it's edited. You can hear the damn tape. Now, you can tell Trump's advisors said, listen, they'll never believe it's edited. Just say you're sorry. The damn thing is edited. They're asking him questions. Dr. Pacheni. I think what you said, madam, is correct. And I think what you need to do and your, your colleagues and your state is to put your representatives on uh, uh, notice to explain to you and to everybody else what in fact are they accomplishing? What in fact have they done other than go to meetings and talk a lot? I find, and I've treated many congressmen and senators, I find they do nothing. I find that they spend years just talking about themselves. They're not visionaries. The elite hire a bunch of yes men. We need visionaries again. Well, I'm not sure we even need congressional representatives and senators because I think what this person, you, you've pointed out very clearly, all they really do is basically talk and talk down somebody. But as a constituent, I want to know what my representative does. And I'm not very impressed on either side. But I am impressed that it cost us a lot of money. Well a said, Dr. Pachenik. Folks really love you on the show. It's crazy. You've been well, on 15 I love years. I to be on your show, and I, I admire what you've done. I know, Alex, you don't like it, but you have been in the forefront, and that is important, Alex. Well, Without I can't you, help it. We could not have done this. I'm, I'm being very frank. You know, when I had Steve Quayle and then you guys, I mean, it's been a huge effort on behalf of a lot of people, but you've kept on going. And whatever vitamins you're taking, please keep on doing it. God bless you, brother. We'll talk to you soon. We appreciate right, your you work. Take care and bless the, the audience. Thank Bye. you. All right, I'm out of